Storm systems are constantly strengthening and decaying around the Earth every day. The atmosphere is full of energy sources that can be used to drive atmospheric processes. Differential heating by the sun on the Earth creates a large temperature gradient between the equator and the poles. Large-scale global circulations, such as the Hadley cell, are driven by this gradient. Mid-latitudes are often home to temperature gradients of large magnitude, making them a great source of energy. Mid-latitude synoptic storm systems often strengthen as a result of taking advantage of the potential energy stored in these gradients. To help us explain how these storm systems gain their energy, we talked to Demetrius Tillery, a senior in meteorology at North Carolina State University. There are two main methods through which storm systems gain energy. Baroclinic energy conversion is one of these. Baroclinic zones, or areas with a strong temperature gradient, are often a focus for storm development due to a high amount of potential energy that can be converted to kinetic energy. Let's take a look at how these work in a typical mid-latitude system. Here we have panel A. We have warm temperatures on this side and cold temperatures on this side, showing a strong temperature gradient because you have tightly packed isotherms. This means a high level of barrier clinicity. We're going to take a cross section through this area right here and draw a new panel right here to show something else. So we have warm water, warm air over this side, and we have colder air right here, which gives us a center of gravity about right here, right along the middle, which means high potential energy. Here we have a mid-latitude cyclone that has formed over an area of strong baroclinicity. We were going to take a cross section through this cyclone right here. All right, here we have still our zone of dividing, and we have the warm air on this side and the cold air on this side. We have the warm air traveling up this way and the cold air going around this way. All that potential energy has been converted into kinetic energy. Okay, this is our original model, but after the storm has formed and, ch and used all the uh, potential energy, it now looks like this. We have the warm at the top, and we have the cold at the bottom. But the only difference is we have a lower center of gravity because all the energy that was potential has now been converted to kinetic, which has made for a lower center of gravity compared to where it was before. See, it's higher up here and it's lower right there. While this process may seem complex, we can actually replicate this phenomenon easily with some simple household materials. To demonstrate this process, you will need a clear container so that you can see the energy conversion as it happens. A clear glass bowl or plastic Tupperware would work well. You will need a divider that will act as a front between the air masses. Any kind of foam or rubber item that you can cut into appropriate size will work for this. This by itself may not be watertight, so you need a way to seal the edge of the divider against the container. This can be done without making a trip to the store, as you can make a simple flour water putty that can seal the edges of the divider. If you have some other putty on hand, like Play-Doh, this would work as well. Using warm and cold air would be extremely difficult in a project like this, so instead we'll mimic the density difference between the warm and cold air. To model the cold air, we will use water. The warm air will be modeled by the oil. Since warm air is less dense than cold air and oil is less dense than water, this is a good analogy. Take a foam plate and cut it in the shape of the container you will be using. Make sure that the sides of the plate fit relatively snug with the sides of the container. Don't worry if there appear to be areas where liquid may leak through, we'll fix this with a putty. To make the putty, we'll simply combine flour with a small amount of water. Mix the flour and water together until you have a consistency that will allow you to handle the dough. To make the watertight seal, apply the putty to the area on the container where the divider will go. Once this is complete, slide the divider into the container where you applied the putty. Make sure you seal any areas where you think liquid may come through. Now we are ready to add the liquids. Pour water into one side and oil into the other. Food color is optional, however it helps differentiate between the fluids once the divider is pulled out. Once you complete this, the experiment is ready for execution. Now carefully but quickly pull the divider out and watch what happens. As you can see, the more dense fluid or cold air flowed to the left and is now underneath the less dense fluid or warm air which moved upward over the more dense fluid. Let's take a look at how this compares to the mid-latitude cyclone. Initially, we have an area of baroclinicity. 
A front acts as the divider between the warm air and the cold air. Once we introduce a disturbance, aka a low pressure system, the fluids begin to flow. This is where the potential energy is being converted into kinetic energy. This is demonstrated by the lowering of the center of gravity. Once all the potential energy has been converted into kinetic energy and has been used by the cyclone, the center of gravity is lower and the system is in equilibrium. In order for more baroclinic energy conversion to be used, a temperature gradient must be re-established. Just to recap, baroclinic energy conversion is a process by which many storms obtain their energy. With that in mind, next time you see a strengthening storm system along a baroclinic zone, just think back to what we've shown in this experiment. You'll know exactly where the energy for that system was coming from.